Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday and today we're going to learn how to build a map in React using Leaflet.js. Uh, Leaflet.js is an open source mapping library that takes um, the open street map data underneath. So it's all sort of open source, which is really cool. You don't need to create uh, usernames and accounts and enter your credit card and all of that to get some pretty cool interactive maps up and running. But Leaflet.js on its own doesn't really work great in React. For that, we have React Leaflet, a package that's going to help us interact with Leaflet, but using components and, and different things like that. And what we're going to do in React Leaflet is basically take some data. I've got the skate parks from Ottawa, the, the capital of Canada where I'm from, and we're going to map those skate parks, showing all the markers where they are. And when you click one of the markers, we'll, we'll show a pop-up that's displayed. And then we're going to switch gears for a little bit and show how to display some remote data onto our map coming from uh, an API endpoint. So I've got a Create React app that's just showing this, this word map right now that we're going to add to. And there's a couple things you need to do to get up and running with React Leaflet. After installing the package, of course, we need to do a couple things. The first is in our index file or wherever you can sort of um, insert some HTML into your React app, we need to add a link that will go and load the Leaflet CSS. I suppose you could also always like go and grab this and just pop this into the app yourself, but you can link to it this way. After you've done that, we need to set some default styling, otherwise it's not going to really know how big to make our map. So our map, it's going to be 100% width and 100 VH height, so it sort of takes up the whole screen. And after that, we're basically ready to start building our, our map. Hey, are you tired of recreating bugs in your React apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a React monitoring solution that helps you track Redux state, automatically surface JavaScript errors, and monitor slow network requests in component load times. Enjoy the rest of the video. So what we can do is come into this app component and replace this div that I had as a placeholder and add map here. And that's almost it to get up and running, but you'll see that it's all gray. So this may trip you up a little bit and I've pasted what we need here because this isn't really something you need to memorize. It's just, we need to give correct attribution to OpenStreetMap. Otherwise, it's not going to really want to show us any map data. So as soon as we place this tile layer in here, we should start to see a map. All right, and we got our first error, which is good because we can fix that. So I don't know why it's not always showing up, but there we go. Set map center and zoom first. All right, so what we need to do next is we need to basically tell the map where to begin we need to give it an array of latitude and longitude. So because we're showing data in Ottawa, Ontario, I'm going to grab the latitude and longitude for Ottawa. And it's not liking, there we go. So we got that for latitude, we got that for longitude, and we need to set a zoom. So how far into the map should it be zoomed when it first loads? So after we do that, we should come back and see that, voila, it's now showing Ottawa, the map's working. So in just a few minutes and not very much code, we have a map showing up and it's time to add some markers and some data to this map. So the data I have to work with is in a, stored in a local JSON file for now. Uh, later I'll show how to grab data remotely and display that on your map. It's actually not too different, um, just where do you load your data from? But I thought I'd show it both ways because it's a question that sometimes comes up when I'm showing map demos. So this data, it's got an array of what they call features. That's each of the skateboard parks. And in the skateboard park, we have each of their coordinates and some information like the park ID, um, a description, flat asphalt surface, five components, uh, not a React component, like a, a ramp or a mini pipe or something like that. So I've already loaded this data in via an import. So import star as park data from this local file. 
So we can come in here and just map through the data and show a marker for each of those skate parks. So we've got park data dot features and then we want to map each of the features. So this is a park. And for each of the parks, what we want to do is show a component that is called a marker. Just like that. So anytime you're mapping data, this has nothing to do with leaflet, but you need to give a key so that React can distinguish between different, um, different skate parks as it's showing the components for those. So each of our parks, uh, if we look at properties, we have a park ID. So properties.park ID. So we got a key and now we need the position. So position is an array latitude longitude again. And if we look for our skate park in geometry, we have coordinates. Um, unfortunately, they're in the reverse order in this data, so we just need to swap those around. So geometry.coordinates. Okay, so park.geometry.coordinates. And we want the second one first. And then we want the first one second. Swap those around so we get them in the right order. So if we come back to our map, we are now displaying markers for all of the skate parks. We can zoom out, we can see them all here, looking nice. Next thing up, I want to basically allow us to click one of these markers and have it pop up a pop-up that shows some data about that skate park. So you can do this really easily in Leaflet by sort of just embedding a pop-up within the marker. I'm going to approach it a little bit differently, and it's more of sort of the React way where I'm going to, to capture and state the part that you wanted to open, and I'm going to control it that way. You don't have to, but I prefer this way since we're working in React anyways. So the first thing I'll do is I will get some state set up. So we'll just call it the active park and set active park, and this will come from the use state hook. And we'll default that to null because you haven't clicked a park yet. So how do we know when you click a park? Well, um, leaflet on the marker component gives you an on click event that you can listen to. So that will, when this event occurs, it will call this function. And inside the function, we can call set active park. And because we're mapping the parks, we can pass that in here. So now we know which park has been set as active. Next up is we need to check if there's an active park and if there is, show a pop-up on the map. So we will do active park and and. So basically check if this is truthy first and if it is, go to the second. And we want to show a pop-up. So pop-up, much like a marker, needs to know its position. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And it's not park anymore, it's active park. and. With a pop-up, we can actually put HTML inside of it. So whatever we want to show up in that little bubble that's going to pop up. So I'll wrap a div around it. I don't know if that's strictly necessary, but since we're working with HTML, I, I like to do that. And we'll pop an H2 in there. So we come look at our data again. We've got properties.name, so that makes sense to show us the H2. So activepark.properties dot name. Oops, close that curly brace. And let's put a paragraph as well that's going to show the description. So active park dot properties dot description. I don't know why this data didn't want to go past this many characters. So eh, it is what it is. So description. Okay, so we come back here and we click it now and we get information about the park. And if I click another one, it doesn't work. So basically we can only click one, which is not very useful. The, the reason that's happening is because when I closed it, it was sort of closing just the leaflet um, event and it wasn't tied into this state that we're tracking. So what we need to do is actually um, add a new event listener, which would be on close. I believe it's on close. If not, we'll figure that out shortly. Um, and we need to actually listen for when that close event occurs and we need to set our active park back to null. 
So let's see if that was the correct one. Open it, close it, open it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so we've got pop-ups opening and closing fine. Next thing I wanna do is let's customize this icon that's showing up. Um, we only have one type of data. We could be mapping many different types of markers and you might wanna show different icons for each of them. Or if you just wanna stylize your map a little bit. Hey, it's me again. Do you hate wasting time recreating bugs in your apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug issues faster, identify performance problems, and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video. I've got this little, uh, well, you can't see it, it's a SVG, but you'll see it's a little uh, skater, and we're gonna use that as the marker, uh, the icon instead. So to use custom icons, we actually have to import something from the leaflet package, not the React leaflet one. And we want the icon. So what we'll do is we'll create a new instance of that. So new icon. And we need to pass a couple properties to this. So the first one is the icon URL, where to load that from. So because we're in Create React app and this image is in our public folder, we can just do skateboarding.svg and it will load it fine for us. And next we want to set how big this is. So uh, I believe it's 2525, that would probably be width and height and array in pixels. So once we have our skater icon set up, we can come down to marker and we can set the icon to be the skater. Oh, nice. So now we get this little skater showing up instead of the uh, boring, very boring blue icon. And it works the same. It, it, on click, we set the state so that it shows the marker. We're listening to the close so it closes down. And everything's great. We basically, in, I don't know, whatever that is, 10, 15 minutes, are showing a map, showing markers on the map, listening to events and showing pop-ups when those events occur. And it wasn't too bad. So don't get mad, but I am going to delete most of this because we're gonna switch modes for a bit. And don't worry, I am going to share the completed version of this um, in source code below, so you can always get that version of it. But I wanted to switch and show how to show um, remote data on our map. So for that, I'm not gonna do a custom icon. We'll get rid of that. But I'm gonna use a package called SWR, which is stale while revalidate from the folks at site. And it is a cool hook um, that allows us to load data remotely and it handles sort of showing a cached version while it's going and refetching the new version and a ton of other features that we won't have time to cover in this video, but it's just an easy library to load data with hooks in React. So what data are we going to display? The UK police have um, a list of sort of all crimes that occur in with coordinates, latitude and longitude. So these are crimes that occurred near this location in the month of October. So we're gonna map them and um, we can see here, we got some antisocial behavior, some below there's like drugs, bicycle theft, all sorts of uh, bad stuff, but we wanna show them on the map. So I can come back and I'll put this into a variable called URL. And the way SWR works is it's going to return us either data or an error using this use SWR hook. And this function wants to receive two things. Um, the first is a key, which in our case, because it's a restful endpoint, the key will be the URL itself. And second, it wants some options. And one of these options is a fetcher. And what is a fetcher? A fetcher, we're gonna define it in a sec. Uh, it's a function that receives this key and returns a promise uh, that will resolve to some data, the data that's fetched. So we'll define this up here, our fetcher. It's gonna take in sort of any arguments we don't really care. We're gonna pass them all along to the actual fetch function that comes with the browser to load sort of remote data using HTTP get and post um, calls. So fetch always returns a promise. 
so we're going to say dot then, and we basically need to take this response and then convert it to JSON because that's what we actually want. So now we've got our URL, it's being passed to use SWR. Uh, we've got our fetcher set up, it's going to return us data or an error. So we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to create a variable called crimes, and we're first going to check that there is data and there is not an error. And if those two things are true, we're going to be able to have access to the, the crimes that have been returned. Now, I tried this before, and there's, a, there's thousands of crimes here. And I was seeing that um, it was struggling a lot with showing that many markers all at once. So we're just going to slice out maybe the first 100 crimes. We don't need all of them to display right now. And if sort of either of these, if there's no data or there is an error, we'll go to the false and we'll just not show anything on our map. So you might want to handle this a little bit differently to do a pop-up or something like that. But that's good enough for this demo. So now that we have crimes, from this point forward, it's basically the same. We're going to take our crimes and map them. And for each of the crimes, we want to show a pop-up. Our pop-up's going to need a key so that React can differentiate. And I believe each crime has an ID, so we can use that. And each pop-up also needs a position, otherwise it, it won't know where to show this on the map. So the position is an array which is latitude then longitude. And we grab that from location.latitude, so crime.location.latitude, and then crime.location, if I could type, dot longitude. Cool. And we won't go into on-click events and markers and stuff like that because it's the exact same as we saw with local data. But what we will do is change the center because if we come back here, um, there's nothing going on uh, where the location I had. So we'll just come and we'll pick uh, this latitude, the, basically the first one. And then this longitude. And we come back. Oh, I think I know what I did. <laughs> All right, so I wasn't supposed to show pop-ups for each one. I was supposed to show a marker for each one. There we go. Now we got it working. So now we're showing the first hundred uh, crimes that have been loaded from this uh, UK police endpoint. And you can see that it's really no different than using data locally. What matters is that you get the data however you get it, and then you can just map over it and show a marker for each of them. And just to show you, show you sort of what starts to happen if you say had a, a thousand markers, you can see that it's sort of struggling to show it. It's honestly not very useful because there's so many of them clumped together. And it's really struggling to like zoom in and move around and stuff like that. So I haven't dug in to see if that's React Leaflet or if it's Leaflet itself, but it's probably not the right solution in React Leaflet to show a thousand uh, locations. So you may want to sort of limit that or look into other options if you're dealing with huge, uh, huge loads of data to display. So that's how to use Leaflet.js to show maps in React using the React Leaflet package. First things first, you need to load the CSS set the set the uh, the size of the container it's going to be put into you can see here if i had like 50 it's only going to show the map in in 50 percent of the the height of the viewport so you, you want to set that to be the size you want make sure to set your center and your zoom on the map so it knows where to position it and make sure to put your tile layer in here that um provides the correct attribution to OpenStreetMap. Otherwise, it's not going to want to show you any mapping data. And then you can go and you can add on markers and pop-ups and, and different things like that, customize your icons. They've got a number of good examples um, somewhere in here, examples of different things you can do with the React Leaflet library. But give it a try. Um, yeah, hopefully it, it works great for you.
Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Bye.